On our journey today is a glimpse of the south side of the Dakota apartment building as it appeared in 1890. So slide on your backpack and grab your passport and come along with me as we travel back in time. This video is sponsored by Audible Adventures. Kindly do me a favor and sign up for a subscription today. Once done, you can begin listening to really awesome time travel style audio tours of the historic homes and gardens and workspaces of the world's most creative and productive luminaries. Welcome along, fellow time travelers. This is Scott Cardinal. Thanks for joining me on another photo analysis video. Today we are traveling back in time to New York City in 1890. That is when this fascinating photo was taken, just south of West 72nd Street and what was then known as 8th Avenue, located on the Upper West Side of Manhattan. This photo of the Dakota apartment building was taken in the year 1890. That was 10 years after construction began in 1880 and that's six years after construction was completed in 1884. As you can see from this view, the Upper West Side has changed quite a bit over the course of time. Among other things, 8th Avenue wasn't even paved. And there are electric and telephone lines along the road. Looking to the left and to the right and beyond, no other buildings of similar size are to be seen. Prior to the construction of the Dakota, there really wasn't much going on in the area outside of sporadic farms and an orphanage, perhaps an insane asylum, and a few scattered buildings here and there. Taking a look at the far left-hand corner of this photo, that is to the northwest of the Dakota, on West 73rd Street, can be seen a series of row houses. Some people refer to them as brownstones. They were built by Edward C. Clark, who was also the owner and the builder of the Dakota. Those row houses were also designed by Henry Janeway Hardenberg, who was the architect of the Dakota. If you're interested in them, I'll probably do a photo analysis video on those row houses as well. Right now, let's see what we can discover by looking at this particular photo. The first impression that anyone ever gets when looking at the Dakota is the massive width of the building. It is over 200 feet wide on the south side. The next impression is the massive height of the building. You see, in the late 1800s, especially before steel frame construction began, a building of this height was quite rare. As you can see, there are seven stories plus another two full stories under the roof. If you look closely, you can see that there are dormer windows for the rooms located in the attic. Though seven to nine stories does not seem like much, kindly consider that the ceilings of each floor are incredibly high. For example, the ceilings on the ground floor are 15 feet, and the ceilings lower incrementally with each floor as they go up. So the Dakota is much taller than the average seven to nine story building. If you enjoy counting windows as much as I do, then you'll notice that the West 72nd Street facade is 11 bays wide, which include oriel windows that extend from the second floor all the way up to the eighth floor level. In addition to allowing additional light to be able to enter inside the building, the set of orioles effectively relieve the wide expanse of the facade. Now, let's take a look at the Dakota starting from the top. The ninth floor is part of the upper two stories of the handsome mansard roof that is surmounted by ornate copper work cresting and stone finials. There are copper dormer windows on each side of the south-facing slopes of the roof surrounded by ornate stone roof tiles. Even though the attic of the Dakota is filled with apartments in contemporary times, originally the attic was used for storage and as small spaces where staff would live. In the center of the middle gable is a ninth floor window, and there is an ornate octagonal shaped balcony. 
The eighth floor of the Dakota is in the lower portion of the slopes of the elegant roof with the stone dormer windows. Even though there are luxury apartments there today, originally there were only apartments on each corner of the Dakota. And the rest of the space was for storage and some residences for staff. Also, it is on the eighth floor where the Oriel windows are surmounted by ornate copper and tile domes that actually extend to the height of the ninth floor. They are each capped with a very ornate copper finial. In the center of the facade, on the eighth floor, is a carving of a Native American's face, a Dakota, in headdress, looking west, within a diamond-shaped border with the numbers 1882. The seventh floor is the top level that was specifically designed with large apartments for residents to live in. John Lennon and Yoko Ono purchased the apartment on the southeastern corner of the building. From this view, that would be the portion on the top right-hand corner. For some reason, people like to assume that John Lennon's apartment is multiple levels and includes the entire southeast corner of the building. That's not true. Although there are at least two or three Dakota apartments that were duplexes that I know of, the apartments were never designed that way. They were created by residents who happened to be able to buy apartments or spaces on different levels, and they added staircases. So, whether or not John and Yoko ever purchased any space in the attic should not distract from the fact that the apartment, number 72, did not include attic space. Either way, many Dakota residents own space in the attic that they bought for storage or for offices or for guest quarters. I understand that there are a lot of people who seem to be quite obsessed with John Lennon's real estate portfolio. For them, it will be quite thrilling to know that John and Yoko did purchase the apartment directly to the west, number 71. That space was likely used for Yoko's projects and for storage and for guests to be able to stay in. Though the apartments might not seem particularly large from this viewpoint, kindly understand that the apartments extend all the way into the building, with additional rooms and windows looking out upon the inner courtyard. As you already know, the Dakota has always had plenty of famous residents. In fact, singer and songwriter Roberta Flack purchased the apartment directly to the west of number 71. Her apartment was number 78, and that was located right there. It did not include the room on the southwest side of the building, which belonged to apartment number 77, which is to the north of it. And for those who are keeping score at home, there are currently eight apartments on the seventh floor. For some reason, some people like to think that John and Yoko lived on the entire top floor or top floors of the Dakota. Once again, that was never true. At the seventh floor level, there is a stone balcony with an iron railing that runs along the west 72nd Street side, and you can see it wrapping around to the east side of the building. Looking down at the sixth floor level, you can see that some of the windows on the south facade have balconies and others have balconettes. In the center of the sixth floor is a stone balcony outside of a large window. Now let's go all the way down to the second floor, and you can see that that is the only level that has round-headed windows, and you can see them along the entire width of the south facade. And looking above them, there is a terracotta belt course carved with flowery and other patterns. And now going one floor down, to the east of the entryway, along the first floor, was originally built a restaurant and a cafe for the exclusive use of Dakota residents and their guests. And that opened up in 1884, and it continued on till around World War II. Following that, the space was sold off eventually to be used as an apartment. 
So as far as the restaurant and cafe, that was one of the many benefits that was designed in order to encourage wealthy residents to leave their mansions in order to move into this new concept of a luxury apartment building. In the center of the building, along West 72nd Street, an entry was built in order to allow pedestrians and horse-drawn carriages to pass through in order to reach the interior courtyard that led to the apartments. In 1890, lighting outside of the building was provided by a pair of multi-armed lanterns. Along the perimeter of the south side of the building is a very ornate iron railing. On the other side of that railing is what appears to be a dry moat that is approximately five feet in width, and its depth ranges from four and a half feet in some places to nearly ten feet from the top of the railing all the way down to the bottom of the pavement within the moat. Now, some people refer to it as a moat, but it actually exists more as a light well. That is because in the late 1800s, electricity was relatively new and assumed by many to be unreliable. And so, by creating this dry moat, it actually allowed sunlight to enter in through the basement windows to light up the rooms below the street level. And so, this concludes this photo analysis of the south side of the Dakota apartment building as it appeared in this particular photo in 1890. If you have ever been to the Dakota, or if you have any cool stories about the Dakota, or if you have any questions about the subject matter, please go ahead and put them in the comments below and share what's on your mind. Also, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn more about the Dakota, you can go to Amazon or any other bookseller and order some of the books that I wrote about the building. Also, can you do me a favor? Download the Audible Adventures app on your iPhone or Android. That would help me out a lot. I do look forward to you joining me again for another photo analysis video. Until we meet again, I wish you gnome speed on all your journeys. Ta-ta!